Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to study your word together. We pray that as we do so, you will lead now in this study. Guide us that whatever is imparted and taken will be edifying to our lives and will fit us for heaven as we tell our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Welcome to those who are inside and those who are joining us virtually in the online space. We are continuing. Today is stewardship day and as such we are focusing what we do on, on stewardship and trying to see different perspectives. What messages God has for us in his word as it relates to us as stewards. Now, in general terms, a steward is a person who's in charge of something. Alright? In general terms. So, you could, you could probably Google that in, on your phone to see what steward means. But, God has given all of us stewardship over something, which is management, some sort of responsibility. And though stewardship at times is skewed towards only financial management, financial management is a critical part of stewardship, yes. But there are other aspects to stewardship, and, I, and I'm setting the base because when we go into the study, I want us to apply everything to whatever we'll be studying. So outside of money, which is the obvious thing, what else, what else are we given responsibility over? So what are you in charge of right now as a person? Right? And no, no, go, no go politically correctly here now and say God in charge of everything. What are you in charge of? As you stand, as you dare today, tell me the things that you know you are responsible for personally. See, a, see a mic here. Um, sister, don't you just read? Yeah. Thank you. Give. Tell me what you're responsible for. Your body and your relationship with God. That's two. So you're responsible for your body, your relationship with God, all right? See some more hands there. For parents, they are in charge of their children and the growing up of their children in the proper way. So, so get body, we get, what else did say, Stefan? Relationship with God and when it's the children, to time. Our time. Time, our time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be on this side. Go ahead. Resources, so whatever blessing God gives you, whether it is in properties or um, just resources on a home. Things are our own, right? Yes. Yeah. Beckford down the corner there. So go, just keep that mic on that side. Let me cover mic. See ya. Go, go that side. Go that side. They're responsible for what you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, as part of the resources, also applies to the talents. Talent. Our gifts, our gifts that we have. So, so we are blessed in general that we should be grown by God. Our things come from Him. All right. So, so in a nutshell, based on what was said, um, your time your talent, anything that you can do, anything that you, you manipulate of yourself, your possessions, your influence. Influence is, is, is a, a new age concept where 
When we say new age, not a new gospel, but something that is now being integrated into stewardship because in the world of influence, everybody has influence over at least one person other than yourself. No matter how in, insignificant you think you are, and you say you don't have any links and you're not big like that, every single person has influence over at least one other person. And how you use your influence can determine how a lot of things turn out. Just your influence. Right? So, you might be here right now, and there are certain people that you look up to or you normally integrate or, or, or interact with. And if something is happening, and that person says, I am not going, it makes it less likely for you to go. But if the person says, I am going, 99% chance that you're going because the person is going. And there are people now who know that they have this sort of influence. So it is used. That's why, why you think that, why you call the social media people now that everybody follows? Now, influencers. Eh? So, I'm just setting a, a base that when we go into what we are talking about, we can speak up. So, segueing into that, I think I have something for you guys upstairs. Yeah, your age group. So, you are early grand. All right, so when we have our talent, time, resource, influence, what is it that we are expected to do with them as it relates to God? What, what is it that we are expected to do with them as a steward? So the Bible says it is required of steward that a man be found faithful. What does it mean to be faithful as a steward? What do you do with what you have been given to make you a faithful steward? I mean, actually, just I look for one word. What do you do with what you have? Hmm? What you say? Obedient, mm -hmm, coming, getting served near enough. So, let's put it in a sentence and, uh, and see how it sounds. So, you serve of your talent, you, you, you serve your resources, your, and serve can use interchangeably, but I'm looking for another word. What do you do with them? What's the word? Or come like me hear the word. Use it, it yeah, use Yes. And how do you use it? By doing it. Exercise. Uh -huh. So you exercise your brain now. So you, you use your talent, your time, your resources uh, by doing what? Where do it them? For sure, so you use them. Words start with G. I want nice little four letter word, you know. So may I look for the word give. <laughs> right? Because, because, because how this strategy principle works is that God gives you everything, asks you to take care of them, and in return, in serving God, you give them back to him. Right? If you listen to NCU, there's this commercial on NCU where, they, where they, God asks the man why he have, and the man saying have one bank account, God say me take it. While say have, he saying have one wife, God say me take her. All right. While say have two children, I will take that. While say have my wallet, God say me take that too. While say have just be the dog outside, God say give me. And then after God take everything, God now give him back, give them back, all of them back to him and say, all right, take care of them for me. That's what happened, you know. And the principle that we need to get, and we're going to get to that hopefully I have until 5.15. So it's both an hour we have. 
Because it's this passage going to show ultimately that really and truly is God that gives everything. Cool? No matter how you want, go around it. The life, the breath, the ability to move, the ability to go, and God enables that, right? So, we are expected to give. So, our study as stewardship, our, our topic is be ready to give. Be what? Be ready to give. So, let's go to 2 Corinthians 9. That's where we are focusing for the Bible class. 2 Corinthians 9. Um, our particular interest is really from verse 6. But we are going to, we are going to start a work. Work ourselves down. Second Corinthians 9. And as I said, we want to go from verse 6 going down to about 11, somewhere there. All right. So let's get some context. In Second Corinthians 8, Paul speaks of the people in Macedonia, and this is all about them giving of their financial means, giving offering and so on to the church for Paul's ministry specifically. And he speaks to the fact that the people in Macedonia, they gave with great joy and they were faithful in supporting his ministry through whatever they gave. That is Second Corinthians 8. Now Paul comes over to the people from Corinth and he is using some sort of sarcasm to say to the Corinthians that, listen, you are the main city, you are the people who everybody look to. And if the Macedonians heard about you, you're generous and give so, so willingly and give so much, we know that you are going to give as well. It's like a little reverse psychology. Paul used. But the point is, the money was supposed to come in. Paul wanted to send some people to collect the, the gifts from the people in Corinth. But somehow he sensed that there was a little hesitancy. So he wanted to use the psychology of what others did to prompt the other people to give. Do you know that that is a marketing tool? You know that? So when you're going to read verse 9, um, 9 verses 1 coming down, if you look at verse 2, it says, For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast to you of them of Macedonia and Achaia, who were ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. So what Paul is saying is that because of you, and what the people heard about you and what they was willing to do. People give enough. So I am sure that you are going to give holy. No, that is psychology. Right? So he says that, and many of us don't respond unless we are provoked that way. You never plan to do nothing, but because your ears say no, the other person did give or never give, it prompt you to, yeah. So, so Paul knows that the people need a little pep talk slash motivation in order to give. But he's going to come to the meat of the matter. So, as you go down to verse 5, he speaks to the fact that he's going to send some people to collect the money. So, he said, you're preparing the money. I'm coming to, it's supposed to be collected by me. He used another cycle. He said, I know that you, you, you know if I'm going to come, you're going to give a lot, but I'll send somebody for the money. But the meat of the matter, I'm just giving you some context, is that we want to go to, to six. So let's read five, and then I'll go to six. Therefore, Second Corinthians 9, verse 5, and we can read together. Remember Bible class. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you. So what Paul is saying here is that he's sending some people for the money. So, they are there, so he's telling them now if you put the money together. Make up beforehand your bounty whereof you had noticed before that the time might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as a matter of covetousness. 
So Paul is saying, listen, you know I'm going to collect the money. All of this money goes towards the ministry and to help Paul with what he's doing. But I want you to prepare the money because you know from a long time that I'm going to collect the money. But I am not going to come. I'm going to send some brethren before and to collect the money and you give them the money. But if you're not prepared to give the money, you might end up giving the money out of covetousness. And this is what is leading us into 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, which is where we want to really push off with the, with the study. Let's read. What, what does 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 say? But I... So somebody can just take the mic from the congregation and read and then the rest of the persons can join. But I want somebody to read, especially for the benefit of the, the online viewers. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. What does it say? I remember, we have two microphones in the house, so, so make sure we're using them, right? So, he who saw it what? Sparingly shall reap also how? But if you sow, what now? Bountifully, you shall reap also what? So, layman terms, before we, we, we go into what the Bible is saying. To so sparingly means what? You, you, you limit what you're doing. You, 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 it's like you're measuring. Right? So you, 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 you're not give as much as you can give. Stingy. Some people that call you a miser. Right? And bountifully is the opposite. Are you with me? You do what now? If you're so, 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 it speaks to a farmer who sowing seeds because it's an it's a agricultural example. Sowing and reaping is agriculture, correct? If the farmer who's sowing the seed count every seed and no one drop too much and whatever, what do you want to reap? Same thing when drop. But if in if in Lego seed in a ground, as much seed as the land can take and within the right space and the whatever, what does he expect? He expects a bountiful harvest. Now remember, remember the reason why I set the context of the study that stewardship is not only money, is because everything that we talk about now. We need to put all of that in it. In other words, if you if you sow your time sparingly, you're also going to reap your time sparingly. And what you mean? In Psalm 50, and even Isaiah speaks to it as well. Where God says, so the first part of Psalm 50, God talks about the fact that what he makes and, and, and promises to the righteous. Then the next part, he speaks to the fact that in the day of trouble, some people go and come to him, but they never can find him. Right? When you come back to Isaiah, he say, you go and call me and I will not answer. And he said, because you did not what? You never seek me early. In other words, when you had the time to see God with your time or to give God of your time, you were spearing with it. So what happened when the man, the good man in Matthew or Luke, the, the parable in Luke, sent out the invitation to people for them to come? You remember that? And when he said, they, they had the invitation already and he sent out the guests and, and sent out the servant and said, everything is now ready for the feast, come. And what the people say, me not have no time to come. What they never have, no time. Because what? Land just buy, wife just married, oxen just buy. So anything that you give for God, if you give God a little bit of your time, don't expect enough time from God. Mm-hmm. 
Let's continue because this is, this is just a warm up. Watch this now. Every man, according to, according to verse 7, and somebody take the mic and read it with me. Where verse 7 said now, every man, according as he what? Purpose set. In where? In his heart. In his heart. So, so let him what? Give. Not what no. Or of what? For God loves us. Huh? Let's 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 break that down. Could break that down, little. So let's start from the first line, because this is an example of what the scripture talk about when it says we are studying line upon line. You ever hear that take from the scripture? We are studying line upon line. So let's go to the first line. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart. Therefore means, before me answer, let me ask, school today, Bible class. What I said to you, first sentence, every man according to as he purpose in his heart. Tell me where you get from that. I was about to say the answer, but, but let me provoke your thoughts a bit. Sister Severin, just wait, see, see and go ahead and then you make Sister Severin come, come in. Raise your hand, man. This call, come talking about the thing. Um, Crystal, look on the chat. Look on the chat and see if they're asking questions, how we can. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm, I'm thinking what you have decided to do. Mm -hmm. Because in your mind. Yes. What you have set your mind to do. And let me give you another version just so you can help you with your, with your understanding of it. Listen to this version. It says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Continue. What, 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 what that sound like? Yes, yes, Ella. Um, so you don't have to talk about the thing. Um, you didn't have to publicize what you considered in your own inner thoughts that I would have given the Lord this. I am make an agreement in your mind too. Mm -hmm. it, nobody physically has known. Yes. So it is possible from God for you to change what you would have given. Yes. But God knows because your name did make the covenant already. All right. May I look for something else doing? So come, come, see, where's the mic on this side? Yes, Chris, you want to say something? Yeah. Just to say that it is um, given with intention. So given it's with? Intention. Intention. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Sister Campbell, Sister Campbell. Yes, so it is a relationship between you and God. So let's say, for example, I get up and I say to myself, we're, we're asked to give something for Thanksgiving. Yeah? yeah. And I have purpose in my mind that, okay, I am 50, you know, blank years, so I'm going to give a thousand dollars for each year. That is what between, you know, what I have purpose in my mind that I am going to give. And when you go to give it, sometimes, you know, you can be there see, thinking that, boy, me giving this, but me could have do this with the money instead, and me could have do, do that. You're giving it, but you're giving it without. Oh, so you're gone too grudgingly. You're gone to the next line. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. You know, it's a common thing, and I am, I am learning this over and over again. Let me tell you something. You see, in a design, do you know that the most expensive or the most attractive design are the simplest design? Like the jersey that is, is ranked as the best jersey is the one that have less thing. For, you don't see one white shirt to do a logo on it and that's the best jersey. You just. But every time with us, as, as just me, 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 me guilty of it too, it's like we always find the thing, the thing more complicated than it is. So we answer broad. Let me tell you now, more you want a simple answer. What does every man mean? We could take the first two words. What every man mean? Each. And that's why I read the next one where it says, so let each. So let's start there. Every single one of us have our own personal giving our need to give. I wonder if you're with me now. We have to start there so you know. And that's why it says, 
as you purpose in what? Which means, say, no, you know, me can't purpose when a sister ever in art. You have to have. So you, you, you hit the nail when I said the relationship. The point is, every single living human being has a responsibility to give back something to God as your purpose in your heart. What it mean, purpose in your heart? It means that nobody now coerce you, you know, force. You decide, see, as you say, as you say, God. You have decided, nobody not force you, you not do it because somebody else has do it because there is peer pressure that is indirect. You know that? And that is why we, we, we are so competitive. And as marketers, even at the church, we use competition to, when we are raised funds. Sister, every group makes 600,000, we have to go make 700,000. We can't make when they report, they report 50,000, I mean they report. Yeah! So, 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 yes, you, you want to do it, but, but really and truly, it is the fact that the, the, the pressure of the other person doing it drives you to do it. Are you with me? So, when you purpose to give God your time, your talent, your money, your resource, whatever you have, it shouldn't be something that is manipulated. It's something that within yourself, you agree and your purpose. When people say, make we use, or we, or we use English in Jamaica, when people say you do it for purpose, what do you mean? You're, you're, you're deliberate in what you're doing. Are you with me? Yes, yes, Ella. And then Sister Edwards. And we go to the next line. Um, the Holy Spirit is available and brings conviction to every person. Yes. Um, God would have led you through something. For example, the man that went to battle. And he made a covenant that the first thing he said, he's going to sacrifice. Because God would have led him through some experience and he might say, truly, God is to be served, so I'm going to make a return. And he made a rash covenant. Similarly, God bless us from time to time in our situations and we come to personal convictions that I ought to do this because God has done this for me. It so happens that when you go to the next line now is that when we measure up, we actually have to give ourselves, oh, I look too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody have got to it. <laughs> but I got to hear Sister Edwards and then we jump over to that one. Based on what was said just now, as you said, we don't force people, we don't coerce them, things like that. When it comes to returning your tithe and offering, do we go around and tell people, return your tithe and offering? Is it right for any persons in the church to do that? Anything the Bible says, we tell people. Anything the Bible says, it is right to tell people. The Bible says, bring you all the tithes into the stores that they will meet. No, I'm out. talking about coercing and, no, and forcing. No, but, but, but again, no. Because Sister Edwards, me get where you're going, but I don't know why you reach there. Say it. I want you to look at it from the other person. Look at my responsibility. Meaning, nobody not physically coercing you, or you are not taking the coercion, but you are making a judgment based upon your heart condition with God. So, so. You, you are coming from the other angle where we are the ones who coerce in the person to give. I am speaking now of you who planning to give. How is it that you're supposed to prepare to give? Number one, accept that every one of us have something to give. Amen? Number two, purpose in your heart, which is a genuine decision you make that is not determined and no manipulation, Sister Edwards, no, no coercion. But out of the relationship you have with God, and as Elder God just alluded to, you have made a covenant with him to give. So, Sister, Sister Edwards, watch this now. Just for you to your point, and we move on. If, and Sister Pam, if, last point on it after this. If a man, if we record, if we look at the books, which is the job of the treasury and the church leadership to do. If we look at the books, and we know, say, Beckford is working, but in our return time. Beckford may not see the book, you know. So if that is the case, I <laughs> just say, Holy Spirit, me not, me not look for the book. But me not, the Spirit said, I can't pick for you without your vex. So, and it's a Beckford not returning time. It is the responsibility of the leader if you go to Beckford and say, Beckford, the books, I say, not now go on, but we know you're working. What is the situation? As Sister Edward said now, is not coercing you, coercing you, or trying to manipulate you to give because if you give it just because we tell you to give it, it's still a grudgingly. 
That is the point, you know. But, but, but listen to me. I'm mean, going to tell everybody this. Don't afraid to preach nothing where the Bible said. That's the way church call for you. So when the church said, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, let me take a punch off it right now. If the tithe's not coming into the storehouse, church, we need to bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. Amen? That there will be meat in the house. Yes, Sister Taylor, and then we move to the next line. Yes. I don't have a nine-to-five job mm -hmm. or a monthly or a fortnightly job. Mm -hmm. But I do get gifts sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I was putting some tithe together, and my daughter said to me, then, Mommy, no you know, you're a talk up, not sister, fam. My daughter was saying to me, but mommy, nothing hardly in the house, and you are going to pay tithe, and we want the money. Mm -hmm. So I said, where me get the money from? Who provided the money? I said, when I give this, I give it from my heart, because I know I should give it. And look what will happen. I will get back more than what I give, and it did happen. Yeah, and that is a testimony to she, you know that? Yes. Are you with me? All right, good. Let's go to the next line now. So let him give not what? Grudgingly or of necessity. What do we mean by that now? Hmm? Hmm? When you give grudgingly, it means that what happened? Tell me a word. I not hear you. So they talk about the talk on the mic. Let me hear what I say. Online, what it mean when you say you give grudgingly? Eh? You're not give willingly, yes, what else? Well, yeah, I see something, you're not give, yeah, yeah. Where's the sister camera? I'm not here, where I say. Or you're given a complaint. You could have done something else. So you really are giving reluctantly. Right? And, and remember now, you know, watch this now. When you grudge somebody, what it means so you do? Well, when I grudge somebody, what do you mean, say? See, not nobody don't know about stewardship. Everybody know about grudging. When I grudge somebody, what do you do? No, so answer me for that. When I grudge somebody, what do you do? Scopiciousness. Yo, yo, yes, yo, yo, something with them have, you feel like, say, you should have, have it, or them shouldn't have it. Are you with me? So when you give God, and you give grudgingly, it's like you're sorry, say, God, get it, you know? Yeah, all right. In our language, you say you have pre God money, you know. You give God is something, and you complain like you say, you know, so God never you know, even get so much money. You know where that how that happened to me? That happened to me when me a parent. When me a parent, me parent grudgingly. Me not know about I got a loan instead. Me not forget to grudgingly. So when we get my pay, you know those times. Right now, so the NHD thing, they just take the money, whether you like it or not, whether you grudge it or not. But when you get your pay, and you, you have to take out 30000 or whatever, they, and by the way, we start paying rent again, you know. Me not paying this one grudge in the door, but can we get a good deal. But you're you, you paying, when you take out, God won, you get a salary now, and probably have 30000 40000 for some of us who have expensive rent. And you have to take out that every month you are going to give a man or one woman. Why me give that grudgingly? I'll tell you the truth. I give it, but I give it grudgingly. <laughs> All right. So, what do you want to say, Crystal? Go ahead. Because we need to move on from here. Um, they, they not grudgingly and then of necessity. It would seem like you're giving probably because it's, a, it's like a requirement. You know, like you're, you're burdened to give it. And it's not because you want to. Like some people, you'll hear them say, why may I have to get up and go work today? You know, instead of saying, I get to work, you know, you get to give back to God and to support the cause. It's not because he requires of it and boy, every month I've got to put the 10% and say, that. you know, like, it's really burdensome if it's to do it like that. So, so when you say not of necessity, a necessity type of giving would be something like taxation. Right? You have to pay your tax. <laughs> Are you with me? And, and some of us treat with the whole matter of tithing like a tax. Remember, you know, God make we get all of the money and then we decide if we are bring it come. You realize that? If, if your work, if your work, and I work for people who do statutory deductions, the government take their money. You think the government are waiting for you can't come to them? The government take their money. Listen, I get some fear that well. I have been emotionally, 
my next word more are you, you know, damage by income tax. <laughs> so sometimes when we get my salary, we just we just depress. And 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 government, I return my tax. But I remember the first time we get a real pay. And when we see tax, <laughs> God does not want us to give as if we are doing a favor and are just to to them a ball about tied and a church and carry down them. No, listen to the interesting part now. This is what I found when I was researching this. The Jews in the temple had two different chests money go into. Two different chests, right? So we do the offering and tithe thing now and we write it on the envelope and the treasurer then get to decipher. But had it been in our time, this is how it would have worked. There would be one over years of a tithe, which is what God must get. Then there would be one over years of the free will. I saw that you saw for returning up. So you have one chest where you carry what God should get based on if you get in 10%. Me, I'm going to carry the 10% over there. So then there was another for the free will offering. And it says that to escape perdition, some would grudgingly give what they were obliged to give, and others would give cheerfully because we're coming to the next line now. The next line says, For God loveth our what? That's why, listen to me now. I could talk about some stewardship. I agree, let me put out the disclaimer from now. I agree that church services must be planned and well organized, and people must be contacted from the week before, and rasters must be set up. And you must, you must organize for God's work. I am not saying that sarcastically. I believe that. But when a man come to you 10 minutes before, because he knows say you can sing. I'm going to tell you something. Nobody now come to who can sing for sing 10 minutes before. If they end up to who can sing, because the one who can sing, say they now sing. Just understand what I'm saying. Now. So then, see Brother Price, and they know, so Brother Price can't sing. And then, see Brother Price, we now jam. Sometimes they don't tell us they don't want jam. Maybe they don't want jam. We're just unprepared. But at church, you come to give. And you say, Brother Price, can you please, please, please sing the special for me? Because we never have nobody to do it and whatever. No, it better you did say you're not singing, even though that rang too. But you come and say, you know, say, me not even want to sing, you know, but me just all singing in a car right now. If them people are not organized, what kind of singing that you think you're going to do? Where you give? Grudgingly, you sing. God no want that. In, well, well, well. By, by way of substitution, if God loves a cheerful giver, God cannot love the giving where he is full or, or grudging. Are you with me, somebody? So even when you, you offer to do things, that's why I said don't confine the, the, the stewardship argument to just your money. You come to church and you say, me I go out there on a Wednesday night, you know, but two, two me don't want nobody to come talk about then and see me at church. So guess what happened now? I see you on crystal. When you come to church, you're not really there at church, you know. You understand what I'm saying now? You come, man, but you say, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Bob Marley again, he say, you fool some people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people all the time. I mean, me add no, and you can't fool God none of the time. So, come back to the top part now. Each man according as he purposed in his heart. So when me come down here every Sabbath, me purpose in my heart, say anything down at church for do me, I got to do it. I don't have the purpose in my heart, you know. So you can't get me upset for do something for God, you know. 
Maybe when the whole thing said and done, I might have a conversation with you and say, oh, you're still the planning because you can last minute every day because some, maybe you're not going to end up with nobody. But if it's God, I'm going to give this service to. Me not give it grudgingly because God give me too much service. So you see, like how me want things, I would ask this in the reverse, like would I say, who want enough things from God? We need want enough things from God. No one. Me I put up all two and me put. <laughs> me want enough things from God. Which means what is going on? Which means that we want things bountifully from God. Amen. So like, oh, you want things bountifully from God? Why you are give God things sparingly? What the Bible say about sparing? If you're so sparing, where you are gonna get back? So anything God want from me, I get it. Cause me want enough things from God. That's are my principle. All right? Yes, Crystal. So the question is: I remember we had a Wednesday night meeting, and we were talking about worship. And if it feels like a ritual, do you not do it, or do you continue doing it till it feels like worship? Do you not? Sing if you're asked to sing if you feel like you're going to sing grudgingly. Do you just decide not to? Do you not give your tithe and offering if you feel like you're giving it from a place of you're not give because you're giving because you're required to do it and not because you actually want to? Do you stop giving until you feel like you're, you're giving up to you know because of worship? That's one way to look at it, but let's look at it the next way. Paul is saying, God is saying through Paul that we must get to a place. Where we reach the purpose in our heart, so the, the giving is not grudging. You understand me now, Crystal? So it's not a matter of not giving because it's going to be necessary to become a feel this way. Because if you are at that point, you're done reaching the grudging stage already. You're really not ready. No purpose to make in your heart. And this is why it is saying every man must make him own purpose with God. That you bring yourself to the place that you're not end up grudging when it's time to give. Or you know, feel like say a taxation and a two thirds and this or whatever. You have to reach to a relationship state, Sister Campbell, as you said, with God, so that your purpose in your heart say, God, whatever you give, I'm going to give it happily. I may mean, come to that word after after this coming. Go to Sagra. Um, afternoon, everybody. If we look at the character of Christ throughout the Gospels, we realize that He had an heart and willing to do his father's will and he did not feel like it was a duty for him he willingly did it because of the will of his father yes as a matter of fact to expand on this jesus bring the will thing to another state jesus said right now not even my will God, they said, I'm going to make and take out all my will out tight. Anything where you say, you make it be done. <laughs> well, Sandasa. Yes, brother. Go ahead. Um, just to touch on what Crystal was saying, as that would have been exploring the negative side. Um, basically, he was in two negatives. So, because I feel grudging, then I basically don't bother give because then how that work out? Mm -hmm. Maybe it is because some of the times we are not in situations where we see criticalness. I remember being in a particular situation where cut a long story short, I stopped on Long Hill because traffic I couldn't go through. The, the, the corner was tight and there was a lot of traffic there. So I had to stop. I stopped on a van 3,200 blocks. I went to move off I feel the truck rail up and like it going twist up and I have to stop again. And my foot them started to tremble. I said Jesus I said no. So yes I didn't know. Bottom line this. This is you know that behind me is a straight line of traffic goes back down to the bottom. And there's a straight line of traffic coming from the top. I want to move off and I can't see nobody even a good Samaritan even to come and hold the line for me. Because once I start to move, I can't stop moving again. Because it might mean I pop up everything same place. You understand what I'm saying? Criticalness. Me need God help now. Yeah. So when me think about, when me come to church and we think about uh, whatever situation when it comes to God and me say then, I must call upon God. Children, they want we need to be clear. Yes. We can't have obstacles in the way. So when you think back to whatever it is that you can do for God, anytime you reach out and near point, and if you think about how, how much God will do for you. 
foot. If you, if you can measure up that. Um, <laughs> let me put something in a context here. I said it earlier, but maybe you not come home clear. We can't do nothing for God. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The same Psalm 50. Let me tell you what God said in Psalm 50. And when you go home, just write down Psalm 50. That is just supporting text for the study. In a Psalm 50, God said, if me did hungry, me wouldn't tell you. God said to me and you, if me did hungry, me not tell you. You can feed God. When God give you, God give you the talent and said, take care right and then you give it back to me. It's like you borrow, you said something this morning, Sister Edwards. I may have a paraphrase, I don't remember it, but I, I get the concept. That you should not expect reward for something that you are supposed to do. A paraphrase, my paraphrase, what I say. So like people go to work on time every day. You don't get reward for that, that you can't track. So, so, so some people don't want to employ you the year because you come to work on time every day. That you get paid for. You borrow my car and you care about my car. And then you make it look like so you do something for me. What you do for me? More than a thief, my car. I don't care for me now. If I lend you my vehicle and you carry back my vehicle, what have you done for me? That's how we treat God. A God car, we are driver. We don't care about God car. We make it look like say, something we do for God. We care about the car. We can't do anything for God. Now let me quickly go to this now. The, the word cheerful in the Greek so remember now the original language that the New Testament wrote in is Greek. Old Testament and Hebrew. The original word for cheerful in Greek is hilaros. H-I-L-A-R-O-S. Which word that remind you? Or hilarious. It's the root word from where we get hilarious. Which when they say something hilarious it means super funny. You make you happy. I saw God expect to forgive you. It's like say, you get the money and you're so glad to take you out get God. Well, some people are looking at us and say, what are you now? Eh? You get the money and you can't wait, sister, every from the money come here and say, God won't need to come out. God needs to get this. And, and if you look at a certain pastor who will remain on him. And the ministry get a lot of prominence for this. Same pastor with them. When I, when I saw some, some of my services after, and how you have to give, some, some person spoke about that. When I got at the church, any money you make, you have to carry all that money come first. In. And you carry the money to your pastor, and you tell him how much you make. And he tell you how much you can get back. And, 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 but those persons probably giving out of fear, maybe. Because the guy in the paper, in the newspaper, said that he couldn't get a job and the, 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 the man tell him, say, he get a job and he work out and he get a job. And when he come, first money he get must be 40,000 and he carry it to the pastor. And the pastor said, no nah, man, hold that, you're not you're going with that. And then he must make 200,000. And when he made 200,000, he come now with 40,000 again, crystal. And like he said to the pastor, the pastor said, so how much money you make? And when he tell the pastor how much money he makes, he say, oh, yeah, give that. I wonder if you understand me now. But, the, the, yes, I come into your the, 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 the adjective, the word, the root word of this cheerful right here, so, in a literal way, mean that you can't wait for the God. We know, men, we know that is not many of us experience, but that is what, that is the, so, so we read the Bible, just, we just read it and feel as if it's just a matter of how we just take cheerful and say, no, it means you must be enthusiastic, you must be happy, you must can't wait. So then my daughter tell me today, she said, daddy, I want to sing at church this evening. I said, we have to feel about the money. And I learned something a long time ago that give God free money first, yeah, man. You hear me say? Don't mash up the money before you give God free money. Because if you mash up the money, 
One buy a tie Bible says, come like hole in your pocket. Because, put it this way, there's, a, there's an amazing way how God works. You have $10 and you have $50 in your expense. Which means that the $10 still couldn't pay your expense anyway. Sometimes we don't really work out the thing logically. You, know. you still never have enough money for the way you need to do. God said, give me my $1 out of the $10 plus the tide is what him mandate. But we forgive one free will offering too, so you must give him something more than the one dollar. So the one dollar is what you return to God. You don't really do nothing for God yet, because God did not tell us if you return that. When you start to do something for God now, is when you reach to the free will side of the offering plate now, where you decide what God gets. So you have 100%, God said 10% is mine. Returning 10%, no, you know, do not do nothing because that is what was God won. In other words, if you're not return the 10%, a thief, your thief, God money. That's true. Just like if you're not worship him one day out of the week, like when he asks for a thief, your thief in time. So you return that. $9 left. Now, you give him a free will offering. So let us say you give him 50 cents. Some people match the tide, $8 left, or let's say $8.50 50 left. Do you know that God have a way now if it's that $8.50 in a $70? You never hear me just say, God have a way now if it turn the $8.50 in our $70 and $200. But we could do the reverse now. You say, boy, I tight this a month, I don't think we can return the time. We have to try to start out the bill then. You will never pass $10. And you say, you can't stretch, you can't work. Why? Because you got trouble with that money. Your money curse up. So my wife, some people, I want to say this out there. <laughs> so my wife, responsible for my bank account, Yes. Yes. That's how you married him too. I was not forced to do it. <laughs> but yeah, really. So the online thing, she. So like I was in South the other day, sister Evelyn. And my wife called me out of the blue. David, where are they? I said, I'm there, sir. Where are they? I'm missing $10,000 for the Fantana and $10,000 for the. <laughs> so, Mister, I spent ten thousand for that. Because you know, it's not normally my spending places. I was some special activity we had. Mister, you know, I'm spending money. So, me, I said she sent me the money like that. I'm saying this to say, anytime money hit my account, the first thing me tell her, me say, send out the tide, send out, send it over, send, move it out of the account, and then make us see how much money we have. Make us work from this up. Because if you start touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, well, left it tight, in, touch it, touch it, touch it. When you look down, you know, and Satan skills, so you know, you spend off, spend off, spend off, you think you are spent carefully. When you look, God money not even did it. So me not give out a compulsion because God do so many things from me. When you only have one dollar left in pay all of the bill, and I still have one dollar left. Me I give him fee one first, and me happy for him. One of the things that affect us is that the more we start make money, <laughs> it becomes harder for you God to have people because it start look too big. <laughs> you understand? So when you make five thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, not so bad. But when you start make five million dollars, God forget five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> And five hundred thousand dollars just a tied. So you still have to give one next piece of money out of your five million. Then the money, Satan make you look big. But remember, God make you make five million. Just remember that. So if you want to give him back three million for give him anything you want to give him, you have the ability for do it. Make you make and, and it, we're not we're probably going to re, not reach that. But in say, when you when you left father, house, mother, wife, in your hundredfold. That's what you say, no? 
So sometimes you have to left house for God. God will give you a hundred more house. You know, go give a hundred more wife though. <laughs> All right, Ella God, go ahead. Um, Acts chapter 5. Just yeah. want to read two verses. You know, say so that in my story, in my study. All right, but so go on to it. So at least you well, can reach here. All right, yeah. we just summarize then. So basically, they had a piece of land. Or they sold a piece of land. That exact next paragraph for me, I got yeah. to know. So go on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Go on. I was just pointing out the whole mental part of it. So Acts chapter 5, make it what we do it together. Acts chapter 5 is about Ananias and Sapphira. This is an example of how not to give. Go on now, Ella God. Yeah, so I was just touching on the point of the Holy Spirit laying something on your heart. A conviction to give or to return X. Because this is the same situation, you know. They had a conviction to give back the, the, price, the price of the land. After they met the conviction close, they changed it after the land. The land said, boy, money took too much. The money too big. So we all give apartheid. None of the apostles knew about it. Nobody outside of the household knew about it. Yet when they laid at the apostles' feet, the first thing Peter said, why has Satan tricked you? Pure mental business again. And to the, to the extent of the setup, the acts, one party is different from the other, and the other party still hold on to the thing and still perish. Based from a pure mental setup, because none of the apostles were in the house. But only the Holy Spirit revealed Based on the conviction that was given. So, 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 we still have the same text on the screen, you know, because this is how you give grudgingly. So, everybody know about Ananias and Sapphira? Ella just talk about it. Everybody, anybody ever hear about Ananias and Sapphira? And you, the, the, the basically, as he said, just to make sure we're clear on what's happening, them purpose that they had, so they're going to sell their land. And they're going to give God anything he land sell for. But Crystal, when they sell the land, it's like they never know sell them or get hundred million dollar fee land. And well, and God is so good, you know, that God multiply the effect. When they see hundred million, is that they must say, but no twenty million me that thing say God go. So then go now and decide after your purpose in your heart. You make a covenant with God. Then you know when the money, when you look, but you start grudge God for the money. You say, God, you have a squeeze of peace, man. God, you can't get so much. Right. Some people say, it, you know, you say God, because they want to justify it. They say, pastor and the church can't get so much. Yeah, man. And, 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 and. The only difference, sometimes when people tell me, like me, I always tell them a story, and I and I so suffer. So me say, you know, say one time when you tell one lie, you just drop down dead. <laughs> the people get grudgingly confronted by the Holy Spirit to Peter. Meaning, they even get a chance to sort it out. So when we come and Satan take you over, man, give it, you know, no, sudden so wall. Six men take them out. A six the Bible say, but then take them up dead. So although you grudge God for money, you still not get the money. That is how not to give. That is an example of how not to give. Listen to me. If you make a covenant with God, with where you give, give. And don't give him and grudge it. Yes, Sister Campbell. Was there, was there anything wrong with the fact that they, um, at the, after the sale of the property, they decided that they didn't want to give all the money or as much as they wanted to give. Are they Ask a question. Me not get there again. Go again. Me not go, right. go again. Was there anything wrong with the fact that they sold the land when they got the money in their hand, they basically changed their mind? Was mm -hmm. there anything wrong with that? Yes. Yeah. That's what exactly. Go, go, on, go on, answer the question. Class, speak. You want to go sister Eri? Hold on. Sister Eri, yeah. No, the, the text says, when they, when they sold the land and they decided not to give it, um, I think Peter said, while it was with you, 
it was up to you to give. What the problem was, they lied. Yeah. They said, this is what we sold it for. But they, would, they had the, the, the opportunity to take Keep to, back to tell part the truth. of it and tell the truth. To tell the truth. the lie was a problem. So, so sister, sister Campbell, what happening here you know, is we in a church and Price said we are going to sell the land and we are carrying the value. Well, we sell it for come here. When it come, Peter said, this is really sell the land for. So if they did say no, you know, so we sell the land and we get 50 more thousand and we tell, maybe would I read the story different? They say, yes, I eat with Selifa. But, 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 hold on. What make them tell the lie? Because they want God money. Your grudge God feed money. Anything that belongs to God and God forget enough for you again. And, and, and can I just go a little further, which, which, see, Spirit tell me now, so that tell me, say, no, me did wrong for grudging to give the money in rent. <laughs> Come here about to tell you, say, no, when you don't give people their things, they don't give them grudgingly. They have to tell myself first. You see how church is important? You think so? When it's come time, the Holy Spirit have a convict with evil upon the pulpit. Yes, because I just know I'm going to jump up and say, so when you think a human being, their things don't give them grudgingly. I'm a grudgingly parent, so I have to change. God, have a, God, me need forgiveness for that. So, it, but it's a serious thing. When people must get, we should not rob people the same way like how they try to rob God. We shouldn't do it with people either. To be honest, we never rob the person. We just give them grudgingly. But the point is, don't try to go. So we have five minutes. I want to jump to 10 and 11. We were, and, and we can close on that. So, go to 10. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower. Both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And let me twin it with the next one and we can close on that. Being enriched with in everything to all bountifulness which cause it through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration 12 of this service not only supply the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. I gave you three texts, but stay with 10 because it's the same concept. God is the one who provides anything anyway. Look at, what, look at what verse 10 there. Look, just look at what it says in verse 10. Now he that ministered seed to the sower. Remember, now we're coming from the context where it is saying, when you are sow sparingly, you are going to reap what? And if you are sow bountifully, you are going to reap what? Bountifully. Then it come back down now to verse 9 where it has said, now you must purpose in your heart and give not grudgingly nor out of necessity because God loves what? A cheerful giver. Then hear what Paul says to us. By the way, in case you never know, after I say all of that, Paul come now and say, by the way, a kind of God really give everything anyway. The same man we are trying to hold it back from, the same one we are trying to rationalize how he said now, he not only gives you the seed, but it has, it has also minister the bread for your food. So think about it this way. If you know you have somebody who take care of you and sustain you, anytime you're in need, then can supply. When you get an opportunity to give them back something, how you think you would, how you think you would feel about giving? Me not, not take out God out of it. For now. More you go up on a person. Think about somebody in your life where, where you know them take care of you. You know them take, they don't do anything to take care of you. And the, when you get an opportunity now to give them back something, how you feel about that? What, 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 what is your attitude towards giving back to that person? It's like you don't give them everything to our fans because them take care of you. And, and you know, say, if you give them your last dollar, 
They might go take care of you tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. What Paul do is Paul, Paul, <laughs> Paul allow us to make a decision and think conscientiously before coming back to the reality. Because maybe if him did say it in the reverse, some people would have get out of necessity or just like when 1 Corinthians 13 said, you give your body to be burned just for a show. So maybe if Paul did start the thing and say, do you know that is God give everything? Then he said, you must give sparingly and not whatever. You already had things said. No, he said, make a decision. But after you do all of that, remember, when you have go around, God is the same God who provide the seed where you have to so sparingly and then give your bread. So what is the point? The point is if God is the source and he asks us to treat what he gives to us in a certain way when we are giving, God just really like you all could test, you know. You recognize that? Because if God would have come to us, so Manuel Vice President just step in. Pastor Manuel and family, welcome. And Mr. Daniel, that Daniel, welcome. If all of in the exchange church decides that we now return our tithe. And we now give no offering. What do you think? God church, God mash up. What do you think happened? It's like, like you stick up, God. You can't move, God. Eh? Talk, talk. How, how, yes. how we are going to suffer. You think you can't move? It come like some people. Like when they say, it's a bolt, apologies. Like when they say, they take away the money from bolt. And some people say, that no move, bolt, man. Meaning, them just say, they expect that bolt have so much money that although they rob him, the amount of money where they rob bolt, someone will never work in our lifetime now. If we live two times now. But to how he's perceived to be wealthy, they are saying, although that missing from him account, he not really shake him. So when we hold out one God and grudge God for money and do things out of necessity and show, the only thing that we are doing is putting ourselves in a bad position. Because we can't stop God's work. I remember just reminding what Psalm 50 said. God said, if I were hungry, me never did I go ask David Price. Because God don't rely on us for anything. God wants us to use what he has given us to glorify him. And in return, he will multiply. It's a multiplier effect. The man said this morning in the sermon, as I close, you have to open up your hand. You have to do it. If you want to receive, you have to give. You have to let go of five fists. Clean up your fist and see what will come in it. Nothing can come in. So hold on from where you have and you will never get nothing. You have to do what? And as a as, as speaker said, God is just waiting to bless you. God is just doing what? God just a wait to bless you. But what we need to do is to purpose in our heart that we are going to give to God not grudgingly are out of necessity for God loves. Yeah, man. For God loves. We now use cheerful again. What the word now? God love a hilarious giver. That's how the Greeks say. God love our, a hilarious giver. So exchange church, those online, Mrs. Manro and family and Daniel, like how we just come. We all get hilarious with the giving. Amen. All right, so I'm finished. The VPs here is just passing through. So I'm going to ask Pastor Manu, hey, why just give away a little greeting time? And Pastor Manu is going to greet us as he passes through. So let's have our Vice President of the North Jamaica Conference, Pastor Manro, Wentworth Manro. Let's make up for us and put your hands together. Let's give him a big amen. Thank you, Ella. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Also, as Robert Stewardship Director, I just want to join with Elder in endorsing what he said about what we have is what God has given to us. So, what we give back to God is already His. But I want to add something to it. There's a story in 1 Kings chapter 17 of the woman of Zarephath. When Elijah was sent to her, for her to take care of Elijah. She said to Elijah, I just have one morsel of meal left. 
But I want you to know that God was about to do something wonderful for her. If she had turned away Elijah, what God did for her would not have been done. So I want you to know that when you accept God's plan and practice it by being faithful in your tithes and offerings and whatever gift, you are opening up the door for God to bless you. Do you want to be blessed by God? Well, accept his plan and work with his plan. We just want to encourage you to be faithful to God. And I, I heard of the incident the other day. I, I spoke to uh, sis, Sister Irving and heard what happened. And we can just see the wickedness of men's heart. Or I could say the foolishness of, of, of men's heart. I've been praying for the church. And these things will happen more and more everywhere. But we, we know that God is on our side. I just want to remind you of one thing. If somebody is here this afternoon not yet baptized, this coming Sabbath is your baptism date. Did you hear what I say? If you are here not baptized now, this coming Sabbath is baptism. This Sabbath coming, the 20th, we will have baptism all across Jamaica, all across the Caribbean, all across Central America. It is Inter-American Division Baptism Day. So if you decide to give your heart to Jesus in baptism this coming Sabbath, you're joining with thousands across into America. So I want to encourage you to, if you have not yet done so, to do so. If you know somebody who needs to do it, pray for them and go and look for them this week and bring them for baptism and Sabbath. May God bless you, my brothers and sisters. May he shine his face upon you. I'm going to invite Sister Marno and the girls to sing before we leave. All right, so they're going to come now and sing. So I'm going to invite, give them another mic so that they can sing as we prepare to go into the AY. So I'm going to rush off to another place. I pray that God will bless you richly as you continue to serve the Lord. While they wait on the, the truck so that they can have the truck to sing, I just want to, to also remind you that the, the, the program that I spoke about for the baptism and Sabbath has different components to it. It has a component of growing in the faith, that is, we're encouraging the members of the church to make a deliberate effort to be reading your Bibles on a daily basis and to pray with your families. What we are observing within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, many of our young people, especially when they move on to go to, to college, 
they forget God and forget to pray and forget to read his word. But it starts when the families don't pray together. So we want you to pray together. We want you to, to pray for your children and pray with them that they will stay with Jesus. The next component is serving in the community. We're inviting our churches when the community services make a community service program. All the members of the church we want to participate. We want the people in the community to see exchange in the community, showing God's love, working for them. And then the third component of the program is sharing your faith. So in other words, every member of the church has a duty to share their faith. Tell people why you are Seventh-day Adventist and why they need to become Seventh-day Adventist also. So I am praying that you will not just be members of the church, but that you will actually share your faith with others. And then the final component is reaping the harvest, which Sabbath is one of those baptism dates across into American division. We are invited to share your faith, to surrender your life to Jesus, and to walk with him in baptism. All right? So, so I hope they already, they already know.
Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath Church. I must say that was a beautiful rendition of the song just sung. Amen? Amen. So now we'll have the opening prayer by Sister. Welcome to our AY. We'll have the opening prayer by Sister Jamelia Jarrett. Could we all stand, please? while I pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for all the mercies that you've given to us. I want to thank you for carrying us back to church safely. Help us as we go through this AY program. Help us to participate. Help us to learn something today, dear God. And please guide us and protect us as we go back home this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll now have our song service by Sister Emily Price. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So we're a bit behind time, so we're going to cut song service a bit short. But um, I want a lively chorus of somebody's choice, too. I don't know that one. Anybody else? Lively courses. Come on, people. Lively courses that people sing in church. Real. Something in my heart and real, real. Another time we'll sing that one. So, real, real, real. Christ so real to me. And love him because he gave us the victory. Many people doubt him, but I can't do without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Real, real, real. Christ, so real to me. I love him because he gave us.
Corinthians 2, 7 to Please stand. Jonathan. Good evening, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from Second Timothy, verse chapter two, verse fifteen. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen, and it reads: "Study to show thyself approved unto God." A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the world of truth. Here is a portion of God's holy word. Please bow your heads with me as I pray. The righteous and most compassionate Father. We have come to you today to thank you for all your blessings upon us, Lord. Thank you for protecting us on our way here. Lord, I ask that you just continue to guide us in your way. Guide us in your light, Lord. Lord, again, we're on the closing chapter of the book. And we need you to continuously guide us, Lord. The world is no longer safe and we're asking for your protection. We're asking for you to continuously provide for us, Lord. Help us to be able to be one with you, to love and adore you, Lord. Thank you for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Saint Jago. Saint Jago.
St. Jago High is representing. Happy Sabbath again, everyone. The sound that you are hearing was the sound from school. St. Jago High is. So hello everyone and welcome again to our AY program. For this afternoon, the class will be divided into two teams to participate in a three-round Bible challenge quiz. Mm -hmm. So I want two teams. So the two, one team is to occupy these two rows and the other team to occupy these two rows. Do that for me quickly, quickly. So everybody just draw to these rows right here. Quickly, quickly. Come on, come on. Yes. So just draw to these two rows right here. This group is small, so you can come over in the middle. Right. All right. Here are the two schools for tonight's show. Defending champions St. Jago High from Monk Street, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, up against last season's runner-up Calabar High from Red Hills Road in St. Andrew. This is... Time is of the essence, time is of the essence, time is of the essence. All right, I think everybody is settled in their teams now. I need a, a team name for this um, group quickly. This team, give me a name for this team. Crystal, Crystal, come for me, Crystal. Come this way. Crystal McDonald is my, is my, what am I going to call it now? Verifier. She's going to verify the answers, right? Yeah, she has, she has the answers right here on this lovely piece of paper. So she's going to verify. So don't watch Crystal. So give me a name for you quickly, quickly, this side. Trailblazers, all right. Mm -hmm. And Rocket Stars. You're not giving me anything. All right. All right, so this Bible challenge quiz is aimed at testing the biblical knowledge of each team. So this afternoon, it's win or study more for either teams. All right, you're setting up the tech. All right. Let me have your attention now. So this Bible challenge quiz is aimed at testing the biblical knowledge of each team. So this afternoon, it's win or study more for each team. I am Sister Shaquan Rose, and it all comes down to this. Students of the Bible have entered this challenge, but do they have the skill, the knowledge, and the temperament to win each round. Let us find out. All right. So round one. In round one, each individual is required to participate from each team. Instructions. In this round, we will have a Bible verse face-off. Starting out with one team player quoting a Bible verse, and, an, and the other team player quoting another verse alternately. When a person can no longer think of a Bible verse, he or she has to drop out and the game starts again with another set of players from each team. You follow? You follow? Yes? 
All right. So stand up here first, two participants. So one from this side, one from that side. Quickly, quickly. Up each. So I, I didn't expect so much person, so we have a big group. So we're doing 10, 10. So that would be five rounds. No, five, five, five. So that would be five rounds. Five over here and five from there. So we have, come one player, come from trail. Come, 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 come guys, now we participate. And uh, come. Come no man, you're just quoting the Bible verses from your head. And note, they must be whole verses and no verse may be repeated. The time limit to think of a verse is 10 seconds. The young persons need to come as well and we, we welcome anybody at all. Come, come, come. Yes. Come. All right, come. And you're from which team? All right, trailblazers. Come. Yes, yes. You hear that? I really, she didn't send up here. That she say, no. That she say. Come on. All right. Again, so it's a Bible verse face off. So you're going to quote a Bible verse that you know, and it must be a whole verse. And then after she quotes a whole verse, you know, so be piece of piece of. It's a whole verse. So you state out the whole verse. And then after she finishes saying her verse, you come in with another verse. And it goes like that until somebody can't, um, right, until you're unable to, to say one. All right, come now. Who is going first? Sister Johnson, come. All right, go ahead. Woo! Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fishes of the seas. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For where thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall any flame kindle against thee. Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. All right. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, so what I want to do is to state the Bible, state where it's coming from, so we can verify. No, make it stay. Yep. Yeah. Change the no, rule after you start the game. Make it stay all right. All right. So we can't say anything that is not from the Bible. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So it's me now? Yes. Ten seconds. Ten. Nine. Oh, eight. oh. Fret not thyself of evil doors, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked because they trust in him. Psalm 37 verse 14. Make a joyful noise on the Lord all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Come. his presence with singing. Let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. 
And Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Psalm 47. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. See the wicked spreading them like a green bay tree. Thou shalt seek them, but thou shalt not find them. Ten, nine, eight, seven. God, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not be fear. You said that already. already. You said that already. Yes. So guess what now? Huh? Trailblazer yeah. is wrong. And no, <laughs> my crowning text, my crowning text is, and God said, I have magnified my word above my name. Amen. Psalm 138, verse 3. The trailblazers took round one. Wait, wait. Do we have any more volunteers to do a face off? One more. Two. Anybody? So, no more, um, no more participants. So, we're moving on to round two. Round two is the name chain challenge. Instructions. All right, Emily, calm down. Instructions. In this round, one team names a character. Then the other team has to name a character that starts with the last letter of the character given by the first team. Team one would start with a name, then team two would name a character and go back and forth until one team is unable to name a character. Example. Example. Team one says Abraham, then team two would give a character that started with the letter M, like Michael, then the next team would use letter L, like Luke, and then Ezekiel, it, right? You, you get it. You get it. And so, you don't get it? Let me go with the example again, all right? So, team one says Abraham. That's this. C all right. So, team one says Abraham. Malachi. Then, team two would give a character that starts with the letter M, because Abraham ends with letter M. So you'd give a name like Michael or Mark, right? Yeah, you, you get Michael, it? Yes, a Luke. Okay. Okay, all right. So the time limit for thinking of a name is five seconds. Five seconds. The last team standing wins the round. So you go back and forth, back and forth until one team is unable to name a character. You follow? All right, so we'll start with this side, seeing that they're in one the first round. So throw up a name for me, please. No, it's everybody. Th 
throw up a name, any name from the Bible, a character. Daniel. Lapidan. N. I feel like this is going to be confusing. I feel like I should do it one. You make them come on. All right. Come. Come, Crystal. Yes, and, and we do it in rounds. So we do it in rounds. Okay. Come. Quickly, 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 quickly. Pep in your step. Pep in your. So, so you come up, come up now. So as she finishes, you come up and then. So. Three. All right. Two more from that team come for me. And two more from this team. Trailblazers, you can't, you can't. Two more, two more, quick, 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 quick. Come, look, in. come, no, brother Campbell, sister D. E. He. Come, right. All right. Come around, come around a little bit. Come around. Well, you hold the mic. Are you and I ready? All right. So after two, one, two, start, start with your name. Mephi Boshet. Mephi Boshet. Timothy. Why me? Hello. Anna. Hannah. Hannah. Come on. Come on. Name on. Is why. Is why. That is why. No, but I mean that Timothy. Timothy. She said Timothy, but they, they thought Mehiboshet ended with T. So they gave another name that which we start with H. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Okay, so we start from fresh. Yes. Okay. Oh. Hannah. Hagai. 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 Isaac. Okay. Hosea. Isaac. Hosea. Isaac. Uh, Isaac. 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 Say that already. Hey man. Hey man. Hey man. Chill, guys. We said Nima already. Nee. Naomi. Hey man, yeah. Oh, Naomi. Naomi. Malakai. You say Nehom. Nehom, yeah. Nehom. Malakai. Israel, I. Luke, Luke, Luke. <laughs> Elijah, it, um, Hosea. I said that already. You can't repeat it. Come now, come now. Quick, quick, quick. Five, four, three, two, one. Ham. 
ham, ham, ham. May he bush it. Hagar. Hagar. Ruth. Herod. Lapidus. Lapidus. Hezekiah. No, that's E. Hezekiah. What's your last name? What's the last name you said? Hezekiah. We answered already. So what? We said, what's your last word? You asked what my last word. Hezekiah was my last word. Okay, so I hear it. Habakkuk. Keturah. Abraham. Yeah, H-E-N-W-I-D. Haman. Haman. Ahim. Haman. Five. Haman. Haman says too much time. A man ends with N. N. A man. All right, so we're going to continue. Naftali. Okay. All right. So they should give H. Age, give a name for age quickly. So, hey man, hey man is A. Age, Naftali. I. Okay, okay. All right. So, congregation, I'm, I'm asking you not to give a feedback. Just allow them to, to give their names. And, and participants, you have to speak up so the crystal can verify what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Naftali. Is that correct? Is that... What? Rachel. L. L. We said Luke already? Luke? Esther. Lazarus. Rahab. Rahab. Esther. Rahab. Boaz. Zerubbabel. That's how you pronounce. Zerubbabel. What? Um. L. Lamek. H. No. Five, four, three, two. Hagar. Hagar. 
They said Hagar hey, already. Yeah. Five again. Five. Four. Hannah. We say Hannah already are in our first round. Hannah? We say Hannah already are in our first round. Two. One. Abigail. <laughs> what she say? What? <laughs> Abigail. Abigail. No, it's no Abigail. <laughs> Alright, so what, what I'm going to allow is two more sets. So, yes. You're picking on us. You're picking on us. So, so no, they, they are out, you know. They, they're out. They're out. One versus one. Alright. Pick somebody you want to go with. Jonathan, uh, you send up somebody to compete with Emily. So the, what's the name of the group again? Rockstars? Rockstars took round one of round two. So we have one more round. Face off. Send up somebody quickly. Come, Sister Brian. All right. All right, one, two, three, go. Hilkaya, Hilkaya, Hannah. Um, has it, has it, Hannah, we'll end with one A. Anna. Anna. Abraham. Anna. Abraham. Anna. Abraham. Abraham. Mordecai. Isaac. Hosea. What A. H, and I said Hosea. Isaiah. Isaiah, H. And you say Hosea. Mm -hmm. uh, A. Aaron. Naphtali. What I, I Naphtali, I, Isaac, Cain, and Nahum. Five. Four, four, M -name. Three, <laughs> two, um, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Which word start with W? Which start that with W? Five. Oh God, oh, that wicked. Let me change it. Hold on. Yeah. M. M. No, that wicked. Methuselah wow. is in the Bible. Methuselah. Mm. What does that with? N with. H. 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 Hezekiah. You said that already? Said that already. Five, four, three, two. Hey, man. <laughs> one. Hey man, hey man. Five, four, three. Nimrod. Nimrod. D. 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 David. Daniel. Lamek. 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 That word. Lamek. Lazarus. Lazarus. Sarah. Sarah. H. Sarai. Ishmael. Lapidoth. H. Lapidoth N is what? H. H. Sorry. Come, H. You know what? Habakkuk. That's a person? No, it's yes. a Bible. Bible. Ketura. A, A, right? H? 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 Chief? H. Five. Four. You know, see, you know. Mm -hmm. Agar, Agar. Okay. No, I'm not that, that, that was That was before. Ruth. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Okay. I, Ishmael. Say that already. I said that already too. Issachar. Yes, uh, that's one. Rahab. Boaz. First round. Zerubbabel. Eh? Zerubbabel, that's my name? Zerub, that's a, yes. Leah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Get yeah, one next, L, without the age. All right, all right, yes, that's true. But oh, guys, the age two. wicked do. Five, four, three. Hilkaya? Two. Mm. Hilkaya? That eight with N with H. Brother Price, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hilkaya. Put that N with Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where is it? Kai. You don't know what you're saying? I. Five, four. Three, and two, with I? One out. I don't know no H name. We say it already. You're fine. Anna Hilkaya, she said she said Hilkaya, the end with H. Yes. <laughs> we can't do H thing, round three. All right. No, but we have to see who last, who not getting a name. Show us another name. Come, the last one. No, name. Come, I will name. You know, say 2,400 names. Never <laughs> come now. All right. Mm-hmm. Stay away from the age. Think about it first, yeah? All right. Adam. Adam. Me. Me. He was shit. <laughs> Hannah. Stay away from... Um, R A, Abraham. I always start with A H N. She said Hannah. This is last H name. Hannah. Come. Last H name. Herod. 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 D. David. D. Daniel. Daniel. Lamech. You say last H already. Lapidus. No. <laughs> One condition? No, because we were we, we weren't able to determine who last went a while ago. That's because it, it was a feedback. What's the last she, name? Habakkuk, sorry. <coughs> Habakkuk. Ketura. That's H. Five. Four. Hilkaya. Three. No, I said next round it. Hilkaya. <laughs> hey, man. Nahum. Methuselah. She said that already. No. No, Miss. Miss. She said that the first time. Okay. Um, so that means. You done. Yeah, they win. Thank own. you, Jesus. So Trailblazers took second. <laughs> <laughs> took the second round again. That one was was that big? Yeah, the one there. Wow. All right, we're back again. So this is the last round now. So each team can part- participate as a group, right? As a group. So this round is the last round, and it's the matching game challenge. So the instruction, this is the last one. The instruction in this round, you will be given an incident that happened and either teams can guess what book of the Bible it is found in. You follow? So this one now, we want to, so you have to raise your hands so I can indicate who goes first. Who, who indicate that they want to give the answer. You follow? You follow? All right. So the first one, the fiery furnace. Yes. Daniel, correct. The second one, the prophet fed by. Come again. Uh Okay. All right. 
Good. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to, so I'm going to ask each team, and if you're unable to answer, I rule it to the next team. You follow? All right. So, the next one for Rocket Stars. The profit fed by the birds. You have five seconds. The profit fed by birds. What kings? What kings? Yes. So that's one for that team. First kings. The profit fed by birds. Second one. Someone who told a lie and died for it. Trailblazers. Someone who told a lie and died for it. First Kings. No, you're supposed to stay with the book that the, the incident is from. The book. Right. You're supposed to stay at the book where the incident is from, not the prophet. So I'm giving you the incidents from the Bible and you stay at the book that it is found in. The book of the Bible that it is found in. Come again. Acts, yes. So that's one for trail reason. No, they did say they were saying it before. Yeah? All right. The next one, a young man thrown to the lions, rocket stars. You have to, yes. The, the faith chapter, trailblazers. The faith chapter. Yes. The borrowed acts that floated. Rocket stars. The borrowed acts that floated. Yes, it's kings. Which kings? Which kings? Cup five, four. Yes, second kings. Noah, this side, uh, Noah and the ark, Genesis, so that's only one, that's everybody that get everything right, all right, rocket stars, a man waited 38 years beside a pool but never made it in, a man waited 38 years beside a pool but never made it in, five, Four, three, two, John. He said it, John. Yes. All right, now, trailblazers. Ma um, Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus' crucifixion. Five, four, three, two, one. Huh? Say no. You have seen. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Huh? And the Psalms. All right. So we'll give them half mark. And Isaiah. All right. So we we'll give them half mark. Okay. The next one. The man who used a mantle to get across a river. Trailblazers. The man who used a mantle to get across a river. Five, four, three, two. Yes. Kings two. All right. Trailblazers. The birth of John the Baptist. Five, four, three, two. No. The birth of John the Baptist. The birth of John the Baptist. Five. Yes. No. No. So nobody got it right. The book is. Oh. It is Luke. Luke. 
So, rocket stars now, the visit of the wise men. The visit of the wise men. Five, four, three, two, yes. <laughs> Come now, trailblazers, the boy captive who became ruler. Five. Yes, Genesis. The rocket stars, the visit of the shepherds. The visit of the shepherds. No. Yes, Luke. Well, somebody said Matthew first, so, so this side got the point. It's Luke. You got the point? All right. Trailblazers, the fellow who traded his inheritance for a bowl of pottage. The fellow who, five, four, the fellow who traded his inheritance for a bowl of pottage. Yes, Genesis. All right, everybody must get this one. You must get this. Um, Rocket stars, the man swallowed by a fish. Trailblazers, David and Goliath. David, five. Mm, time. Come again. No. What Samuel? No, it's first Samuel. First Samuel. All right. Rocket stars. The coat. Of many colors. Yes, lovely. All right, your question. The boy who ran away from home. Uh, over to you. Yes. All right, perfect. You should give them an extra mark, but we're not going to do that. Okay. All right. Your question now. The fruit of the spirit. Yes, Galatians. Set it down. We're coming down to the last six. The last, no, the last five. This side, the armor of God. The armor of God. And... Oh, she said it right as we said eh. <laughs> she said it right as we said eh. <laughs> she said it. It's Ephesians. All right, your question. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Okay. Okay. Your said The parable of the ten virgins. Yes, all right, right as me, okay. Your side, Boaz. Huh? Okay, Ruth, yes. The last two, your side, Nicodemus talking with Jesus. Yes. Yourself, man. They must, they must. The last one, the Ten Commandments. And, and five. And this side. And all right. Exodus and Deuteronomy. We didn't hear, we have to say it loud. No, but you didn't say Deuteronomy. All right, let me, let me give you another one. This is a, this is a, what do you call that now? Bonus, a, a breaker. No? Oh. I can't. Okay. All right, Crystal, come forward for me. Let me see the points that you have. 
Round two. All right, so to conclude our Bible challenge quiz, Trailblazers would have taken round one. Okay. We're doing it by round, so it's not no winner, winner. You just, all right. So Trailblazers took round one. Rocket Stars. Rocket Stars took round two. And for the final round, round three, Rocket Stars took round three. So all in all, our winner for this evening is Rocket Stars. Okay. This concludes the end of our AY. Can the person for Vespa Find the person for best book. Huh? Amelia, you're supposed to sing for us this evening. Come this way for me. We will now have a special item by Sister Amelia. Make her welcome. Come this way. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Lord, I pray, I honor your name as a liver young man. Seas. Whenever I fall, you lift me up. Glory to thee, oh Lord. Lord, I pray, I honor your name. I deliver your glory. Concludes the end of our AY. Can I now have the person for Vesper?
Amen. Amen, everyone. I would believe that we have already, the sun would have already set, but you know, it's my, my favorite word, our term is happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, good. No, that was a very engaging AY, we must say. I thought that um, since, you know, uh, we would use the same text, and this would have highlighted that we all have some work to do, right? This AY would have highlighted that we both, both teams, rocket science, science, stars, okay, and trailblazers. <laughs> we have some work to do um, because God really invites us, you know, to study to show ourselves approved. And that would have been the, the opening um, text. So I'm just going to read it. And that will be our charge for this week. You know, in light of that as well, while we're at camp, Easter camp, because we never really get to give our camp report. And you know me excited about everything, right? Right? Okay. And you know me add a little razzle to everything, right? Right. So camp, you know, you have to, every morning, you have to remember your morning text. Whenever they come for inspection, you have to ensure that all your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed in the rooms. Even though it's in some classrooms that were already not, you know, so well put together. You know, you had your cobwebs here and there. Your hangers have to be turned one way so that in case of emergency, you can just grab and go. Um, your pillows, the end of the pillows have to be turned one way. So is it going to turn it to the door or to the wall? Your, your Bibles, no dog ears, nothing except a bookmarker. Listen, and some persons have enveloped, tied, enveloped me. I tell you, no. it was a fun experience and you learned so much. And it also taught you to, you know, take care of God's word. When you're spreading your bed and you're folding the sheet, the sheet can't fold with no piece side, hang out. Everything at the cross and that, you understand? So it, it taught us a little bit of home care and it also really challenged our mind in terms of remembering God's word and being intentional about it. I said the people and get creative up there, you see? I see some people make sound with a scripture, you know. So some, some scripture when I'm not reading my melody, you know. And we had to make songs just to remember it. Because it's, you know, you find creative ways to memorize the text. And um, for those few mornings, you know, we always say, boy, how would I do that? How could we remember? Also, long passage, may I tell you? But we had to. Because you would lose marks. And nobody wants to lose marks. Because in the morning, when we're going out for line call, right? We had to. We had the opportunity to either raise the flag or lower the flag. And everybody want to raise the flag. You want to march, go up, they're going to collect your new color. What do them call it? Symbol? There's something where you hang by your hand. Where you have to have. And if you pass one certain mark, you have to walk with rock, stone, or stick. Honors, right? That, that color flag, and it goes up each morning depending on the points that you have. Um, I don't know if it has changed since, you know, the older folks would have gone to camp. But you have your honors and based on your points in the morning when they come and inspect the one that's leading or get to go and raise the flag or lower it um and so many other fun and ex yeah and you had to carry blocks if you if, if your team never did go on with nothing you'd have to carry rock stone or you'd have to get a piece of stick some get half a block some get full block and so much more and <laughs> let me tell you I, I got complaints that why the food them never really so nice you know i mean tell us me my belly full and me feel nice, right? The food was good. It was well prepared and it was tasty. Never lack no seasoning like me did here before me go. Let me get the experience it for myself and it never that bad. It was good. And I was thinking that maybe it was because it was so little of us, right? Because it wasn't a lot of us at camp this year. But, you know, camp is camp by itself. But when you go there, you make it your own experience. And I did just that. I met friends and um, Sister Balfour and um, Brian Cook here. Sister Brian. <laughs> you know the long man but the few that came we made it our own experience and we enjoyed ourselves and we met new friends I mean I tell you you know the banquet part go right we not have to go down the lane there not true you have some art break we're going for a day there you know <laughs> and you could <laughs> you could tell that persons would have asked and made their inquiries done have another day or so me not go me not go me not go snitch by him but I see Jonathan around the back and Jonathan is laughing so you must know that go. <laughs> But um, it was rich. It was a rich experience. And I invite you all to, you know, make the effort to go to camp, man. As I'm here to tell us, you see, in my unit, there was a lot of older folks. So camp is not just for kids. 
older folks were there. I mean, I tell you, they make it fun too. They never drawn up, they never, they never open on themselves and go on like that because we made it a good experience and we enjoyed ourselves within the limitations, of course, and, and you know, of, of Christian fun, clean Christian fun. Social was good. Sports day was good. It was a good experience. I mean, I don't know if I just me, you know me, I was excited, but it was a good and rich experience. So I say that to say, we'd love to even bring back the morning watch text because it's a good way to really challenge your mind. You know, if you can study God's word, you can study anything else I mean by it. Anything else. And no, 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 we're not going to that today. <laughs> but um, we want to study God's word because when we can remember God's word, we can remember anything that is put before us. So if we want to be brilliant, if we want to come from Brighton Town Academy, we can use God's word as a tool and mechanism because when you have to go remember all of the do it, shall it, will it, that challenge your brain. And then you can remember anything else that is put before you. So this week, that's our charge. Study yourself. Study to show yourselves approved. Amen? Amen. So stand with me as we pray to close out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful for this, your Sabbath. Lord, it is truly a blessing to be able to come together to fellowship. Now we can see why you would have advised us to not forsake the assembling of the brethren because it is a refreshing experience from Sabbath unto Sabbath when we gather here to worship and to lift your name on high. Lord, we are rejuvenated, we are refilled, and we're ready to tackle this week, Father. But Lord, we still seek and we continue to seek your guidance because though we feel refreshed and rejuvenated, we are going out into an untried week. But Lord, we're going with you. We're asking you to go before us, beside us and behind us. We pray that you cover us in all aspects of our lives, dear Father. And may this week, as we continue to study, as we continue to share in your word, that we will study your words. We study to show ourselves approved unto God, dear Father. For if we should memorize your word, we will have the capabilities to memorize anything that we will, dear Lord. Whether it be in our studies, in our work. But let us put you first this week. And we know that all other things will be added unto us. Bless us and keep us. And thank you so much for being the good God you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Would we have had a good Sabbath today? Amen. I would agree a thousand times. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to tell each individual who would have uh, came out today to support us in whatever way you could have, even if you left early and you're joining us online. Um, I'm telling you that this AY was full and we like to see it this way. What do you say? Amen. The, the pews are filled and you could join us too, you know. So we want to say thank you to all of you who are here and would have supported, would have participated. It was a fun, fun filled and fueled um, AY and uh, we want to tell you all thank you. Um, this is where we end for today. Have a blessed week. Bye.